بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله وعلى أهل بيتك المظلومين صلى الله عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم Everybody together السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته صلوات We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of our beloved Imam Imam Mahdi ajalallah ta'ala farajul sharif with the blessing of another loud salawat Inshallah, all of us gathering tonight will be amongst his companions and his sincere soldiers with the blessing of another loud salawat. قال الله الحكيم في محكم كتاب الكريم عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ذلك ومن يعظم شعائر الله فإنها من تقوى القلوب صدق الله العلي العظيم. As we promised last night inshallah we will try our best to equip you with weapons with tools with resources that inshallah when you are approached by a misconception when you are approached by a doubt when you are approached by a non-shia or a non-muslim talking about quran bringing a verse from quran and asking you about asking you to explain it to them or non-Shia questioning your faith inshallah with the introduction tonight you will have enough resources and able to reply back to them but I need your undivided attention it's very deep discussion but it's very 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 beneficial typically we have two kinds of approach when we look at the verses of Quran and the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt narrations and the story and the history of Ahlul Bayt one kind is that typically unfortunately majority of the people apply the first style of thinking they take one verse of Quran one hadith one event within the history and they try to take that as a resource to make a judgment about X or Y or Z. Same thing for hadith. They take one hadith, one verse. How many times has been that my youth come to me and they ask me, Sheikh, a non-Muslim or a non-Shia brought me a verse of Quran or a hadith and I didn't know how to answer them. This hadith is very, very deep or it has some contradiction within it this verse of quran has it's very deep or has contradiction in it i don't understand it i was i wasn't able i was not able to reply back to them pay attention a non-shia approach make sure we don't fall into this, this into this trap this introduction has relationship to our topic of these 13 nights which is sha'a or the rituals of Imam hussein alayhi salam the sacrament of Imam hussein alayhi salam but we need this introduction person comes to you from non-Shia says you Shia seek aid from Ahlul Bayt 
When you go to Karbala, when you go to Najaf, when you go to Kavamain and Samarra, when you go to Mashhad al-Rada alayhi salam, when you go to Baqiyah, you seek aid from Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salam. Haven't you read, don't you read every day in Surah Al-Hamd, Iyaka na'abudu wa Iyaka nasta'een, you only we worship and you only we seek aid from, what kind of belief is that you have? Haven't we been, haven't been, we been approached by this question, by this discussion that you Shia seek aid from Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as-salam where Allah says, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ We go to the translation, I don't know English, I don't know Arabic, I go to the translation, yeah, it says, you solely we worship and you solely we seek aid. He's right. Our belief, Shaykh, is under attack. Who said we are right? And you get other two, three other questions. You believe that Ahl al-Bayt also believe in unseen. Allah says in the Holy Quran, وَعَنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحَ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُوَ He has the key. وَعَنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحَ الْغَيْبِ He has the key to, ins- to unseen. Nobody knows except him. You believe Ahl al-Bayt believe they know of unseen. Oh my God, they are right. And another verse, and another verse, and another verse. You seek Ahl al-Bayt for Ahl al-Bayt to, to cure your illness. Ibrahim, Prophet Ibrahim in Quran says, فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ Allah should cure you. One verse, one verse, one verse only. That's the first kind, Amir, kitchen. Let's have a loud salawat. By no means your salawat was loud. Let's have a loud salawat. So that's the first style, taking only one verse, one hadith. A person comes to me, Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib has said, don't do jaza. Means don't grieve loudly. Don't cry loudly. Don't show any sign of grief and mourning. Well, when it comes to Abu Abdullah Hussein, then how comes that you guys cry and you encourage people to cry loud and you shed tears and you scream and so on and so forth? Amir al Mu'minin. Again, we only looked at one hadith. That's a style that from tonight, inshallah, we won't apply in our reasoning at all. We will be, inshallah, from the second group of people, which they will bring a topic, one topic. They will look at the whole Quran, bring all the verses of Quran that is related to this topic, bring all the hadith of Ahlul Bayt that is related to this topic, and then they will drive a conclusion. Not only one verse, one hadith, one story, one event. We will be able to come to a better conclusion when we look at all of the verses of Quran. We will be able to find the truth because within Quran we have ayat which is mutashabiha and ayat which is muhkamat. We have verses of Quran that they have similarities and then we have those that are firm and then we have nasikh and mansukh. One verse came and then later on, two, three years later, five years later, another verse came that rejected the first verse, but the first verse is still in Quran. For example, when it comes to alcohol, somebody can just take one verse of Quran. It says, Allah says, don't get near salah while you're drunk. Well, I'm not going to drink before the time of salah. After salah is finished, I have all the way until next salah. If I even get drunk, I will be done. I will be out of drunkness and then I can pray anymore. No. Read another verse about alcohol. Read another verse. Read another verse. Bring the topic of alcohol. Bring all the verses together and drive a conclusion. This is what our maraja do. They come, they sit, they bring a hadith, authenticate the hadith. Verses of Quran, read all the tafsir. This verse of Quran, all the hadith related to this tafsir. History of the Imam, is there any precedent before this? And so on and so on and so forth. They take days and days and months to drive and to come to conclusion for one fatwa. We read one hadith, which we don't know the Arabic, we read the translation. Not sure the translation is right or wrong, and then that one hadith or that one verse of Quran, we base our argument on that and we go forward completely that this is the truth and nothing but the truth. So, from tonight, anybody who comes to you and tells you this one verse, let's go and answer those 
verses that the non-Shia post to us try to attack our belief. We only seek solely from you, Allah, and we only ask aid from you. You think to yourself, yes, we're supposed to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wait. Don't be amongst the first group. Let's go to the second group. Second group of people will look throughout the Quran. Where is Isti'an, aid? Is there any other verse within the Holy Quran that talks about Isti'an, seeking aid or not? Yes. Surah Al-Hamd, Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een. Next chapter, Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, Ista'inu bi sabr wa salah. Seek aid from patience and salah. Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een. We said in the first chapter, Allah said, you seek aid from me. I, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tell you to seek aid when you have problems, when you have difficulties, when you are facing challenges within your life, seek aid from sabr, patient, and salah. How many of us, when we have challenges, we do wudu? We said, not the time of salah, before salah, time of salah, after the time of salah. We face a lot of challenges within our life. We really don't know where to go. We don't have the answer to our question. Oh Allah, I pray two rak'ah to you only. It's not wajib, it's mustahab. I'll do wudu, two rak'ah, get closer to you, to you, Allah. Find me the answer, put the answer in front of me. I don't know where to go. Asta'inu, seek aid from salah, seek aid from patience. Between parentheses, I always tell my son, when I, for example, I tell him to do something, he tries to open something or he keeps trying, 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 trying. I tell him, hold on. When you see something, it's the more you put effort, the tighter it gets, leave it, take a deep breath, wait, give it a couple of minutes, then try again. I give him the example. Sometimes there's a knot, you're trying to open the knot. The, sh the harder you try, the tighter the knot gets. Give it a break, hold, take a deep breath, go and come back and slowly try to open it. It will open. Many of the problems that we are facing within our life, because we try to fix it right now, let's just ajala, ajala, rush, rush, rush. No, hold on. Be patient, sabr. Hold on. Istainu. Seek aid from sabr. Sabr doesn't mean one minute, one hour, five hours, ten hours. Sometimes sabr means two years. Sometimes sabr means five years. Ten years. Istainu. Allah says, be patient. I will get you the answer. Just be patient. So we answer the question. If they come to you and say you seek Ahl al-Bayt, aid from Ahl al-Bayt, you will ask them, Salah is important in our belief. Salah is in our furu' al-deen. Imam is in usul al-deen. If, if I seek aid from Salah, don't you think if I seek aid from Ahl al-Bayt which they are the fundamentals, they will give it to us? Oh, they have been killed. Bring in verses of Quran. That shuhada, are, they haven't died. They are still alive. And the Rabbihim yurzaqoon. Everything that we believe, there are verses of Quran. If we are not from the first group, meaning we just don't take one verse. That's one misconception cleared. Another. They bring the verse. You believe that Ahl al-Bayt, they, 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 they know unseen. They know unseen. But it contradicts Quran. Which verse are you talking about? Allah says, Allah has the key to unseen. Nobody knows but Him. How do you believe that Ahl al-Bayt knows they know unseen? Tell them, Habibi, hold on. Tell them, I'm going to give another verse to you that supports your argument. They will be like, wow. Chapter 72, verse 26. Allah says, عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ فَلَا يُظْهِرُ عَلَىٰ غَيْبِهِ أَحَدًا Knower of the unseen, he does not disclose his unseen to anyone. He will say, see? See, this, this proves my point. You already said it. Nobody has the knowledge of unseen except Allah. Tell him, Habibi, wait. The same chapter 72, we just read chapter 72, verse 26. Tell him, go to next verse, 27. إِلَّا مَنْ ارْتَضَى مِنْ رَسُولٍ فَإِنَّهُ يَسْلُكُ مِنْ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِ رَصَدَى So, I read the two verses together. Knower of the unseen, he does not disclose his unseen to anyone except to an apostle he approves, approves of. 
Nobody knows unseen. Nobody Allah exposes, He doesn't expose the unseen to anyone except an apostle that He approves of. So if He approves any of the Prophet, He won't approve Ashraful Makhluqat, His best creation, Ashraful Makhluqat, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, Salawat by His name. Let's have another loud salawat. Based in Quran, I bring to you evidence that when Allah wants someone to know unseen, he or she will know. So what is the resource that we have? What is the concept that we have starting tonight? As soon as somebody brings you a verse of Quran, non-Muslim brings you a verse of Quran. You Muslim believe in such and such and such and such. What is this? This verse of Quran. Tell him, hold on. This is the concept that you're talking about? Okay, let's look at the history. Let's bring these verses, all of them together. Bring the hadith of Ahl bayt together. Bring history together. Put them together. Let's look at it as a whole picture. Not only one piece of the puzzle, which doesn't mean anything, or it can contradict itself. A non-Shia attacks your faith. This is what you believe. So, such and such, such and such. You believe Ahl al-Bayt will, will uh, cure your illness. Allah, uh, Prophet Ibrahim said, فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ He is the one who he cures. Tell him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran about honey, Asal, فِيهِ shafa. If Allah can put shafa and cure in Asal, Allah can give the mid Allah can give cure to Ahl al-Bayt for them to provide cure for us. You will see the relationship to our topic, inshallah. Let me finish a couple more verses of Quran. You see how I, how, I, how I will connect it to our discussion of the rituals of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Next, we say again, we believe Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, they know unseen. But the difference between Ahlul Bayt and Allah is Allah Allah know the knowledge of unseen is part of his essence. But Ahl al-Bayt they receive it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not part of their essence. It's iktisabi, husuli. They get it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't have it from themselves. The knowledge of unseen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is part of his essence. Ahl al-Bayt, they get it. Allah says, anybody who I approves of, I'll give him the knowledge of unseen. Any better creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than Ahl al-Bayt We go before that. Follow. It's a very nice analysis. Chapter 28, verse 7. I need your undivided attention. Be with me. The mother of Prophet Musa, when she gives birth to Prophet Musa, she fears that Bani is, uh, Pharaoh and his people will attack and they will take the child. Allah tells her what? Chapter 28, verse 7. وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ We revealed to Moses' mother and أَرْضَعِيهِ نُرْشِمْ فَإِذَا خِفْتِ عَلَيْهِ فَأَلْقَيْهِ فِي الْيَمْ When you fear for him, cast him into the river. وَلَا تَخَافِي وَلَا تَحْزَنِي Do not fear or grieve. إِنَّا رَادُوهُ إِلَيْكِ we will restore him to you. وَجَاعَلُوهُ مِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And we will make him one of our messengers, one of our apostles. How many years later on, Prophet Musa became Prophet? 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. 50 years before Prophet Musa becomes Prophet, the mother of Prophet Musa knows that he is going to be the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does she have the knowledge of unseen or not? She has. Who gave it to her? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While your baby is still, a, is still a kid, throw him into the river. We will return it to you. She didn't know. We will return it to you. And we will make him one of our messengers. 40 years later, Prophet Musa, or 50 years, I don't remember now the exact, when was the time that he started his mission? He announces his prophethood. So if the mother of Prophet Musa receives a revelation which is not ma'soom 
as our 14 Mahsum? Is it hard to believe Amir al Mu'mineen receives revelation? Not the revelation of prophethood. Don't get me wrong. But when they ask, we have many of the, many events within the history. People would ask Ahlul Bayt a question. They would think a little bit, and then they will give the answer. And majority of time, more than ninety percent on spot, they would give the answer. Allah reveals to them: Is it possible or not? Yes. Allah reveals to the, the mother of Prophet Musa. Allah sends revelation to the Prophet to the mother of Prophet Isa Allah sends revelation to a bee, animal, insect. Why is it so difficult to believe that Allah sent revelation to Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam Wow, why? So this is end of this introduction to our topic. How do we connect this topic of us not only taking one verse, one hadith, one event within the history. Oh, Imam, Imam Ali alayhi salam said so and so. Okay, did you read all the sayings of Imam Ali alayhi salam? Or you only took from the part of the word from Quran, La ilaha. Oh, in Quran says La ilaha. I swear to God, I saw something wrong. Habibi, just continue. It says Allah. Just continue. So from tonight, we won't be amongst those people who only take one hadith, one event, one verse. As soon as you've been approached with this misconception, so okay. I'll go and I research and I will read and I'll investigate. I will see all the verses of Quran, all the tafasir. I'll ask the Shaykh and now I come up with an answer. This is haram. Really? Is this haram? Yeah. How did you get to this? Well, see, this verse says haram. Hold on. Hold on. Let's read all the verses. How do we, how, what is the relationship between our topics? The sacraments of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, the rituals of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Sha'airullah, Sha'air of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. We can look at Karbala, Ashura, Imam Hussein, also within similar perspective. Either we can take Ashura, Karbala, Imam Hussein within one perspective. Or we can bring Karbala, Ashura, Imam Hussein, and put it as a whole picture, look at it as a whole picture, not only one event. One of my teachers was arguing this. Imam says when he leaves Mecca, Medina to Mecca to Kufa, he says, So based on that, his movement is the movement of social justice. How many times we've seen people come for procession? Imam Hussein came for social justice. Only came for social justice. Was it only? Imam says in another place to one of uh, one of the people asking, why are you leaving? He says, Sha Allah and Yarani Qatila. Allah wills to see me to be sacrificed. So this is movement of Imam Hussein, Karbala, Ashura, Imam Hussein to be something from unseen. Imam says to another companion, why are you going toward Kufa? He says, don't you see the tyrant Yazid and what is he doing? He basically, his movement was political movement. So we shouldn't take each, each, each. No, no. Put it again. Put it together and drive a conclusion. Imam Hussein alayhi salam was there. This is the time. This is where I want to get to. This is the core of this connection. Why you shed tears for Imam Hussein alayhi salam? Why you beat your chest for Imam Hussein alayhi salam? Imam Hussein doesn't, your, doesn't need your tears. Imam Hussein doesn't need your black clothes. Go sit and gain from Imam Hussein. Learn from Imam Hussein. What is the reason for you sitting together and dropping tears? Like a woman. Haven't we heard this kind of discussion from thinkers within Islam? Why participate within the rituals of Imam Hussein alayhi salam? Imam Hussein didn't wasn't sac he didn't sacrifice himself for you to come and sit and cry like a woman haven't we heard this discussion imam hussein alayhi salam abra wa ibra abra imam said i i was killed for you to shed tears i was sacrificed for you to mourn and grieve and also abra 
for us to gain from him, to learn from him, which the five, six, the first five, six nights we dedicated, what some of the things, some of the concepts, some of the moralities that we learned from Imam Hussein alayhi salam, which is countless. If we just want to dedicate whole Muharram and Safar to the akhlaqiyat and the moralities that was applied, that were applied in the journey of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, even after Imam Hussein was sacrificed, it won't be enough. 60 days of Muharram and Safar. But we only brought five, six of them. So try again, keep this back in, your, in the back of your mind. As soon as somebody brings this question to you or this misconception, or they have, inshallah, they don't have anything in their heart. Their heart is pure, but they've been misguided. What is it that you're doing? What is this? What is this arrogant, this uh, barbaric act that you do just sit and cry, cry? What is this? Have a conference, nice setting, and let's talk about Imam Hussein alayhi salam. That is to its place. Gatherings, participating within the rituals of Imam Hussein alayhi salam has its own place also. Abra wa ibra. Shedding tears, participating in the rituals, and gaining from Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Let's get to Sha'air. Time goes so fast. When you sit on this member, behind this, Time goes like one minute. Let's have a loud salawat. <laughs> Let us remind ourselves of Sha'ar. We said we have three sets of verses that talks about Sha'ar for those who just came tonight. Three sets of verses that talks about Sha'ar. Some of them that are in general. Allah, <laughs> And whoever upholds, exalts, and glorifies the signs and the symbols of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is of the sign of the piety of the heart. General. One of the other verses that we were able to mention about general sha'ar, nothing specific, Allah says chapter 5 verse 2. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la tuhillu sha'ar Allah. You who have faith, talking to you and I, you who have faith do not violate Allah's symbols. What is Allah's symbols? Everything that, as we, if you remember, we said everything, action, participation, a word, a practice, a place that reminds us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes sha'air Allah. And Allah says, do not violate any of the sha'air Allah. And as we said, one of the sha'ar, the next verses that we brought that specifically mentions a sha'ira, Safa wal marwa. Inna Safa wal marwa min sha'ar Allah. So if somebody goes and destroys Safa and marwa, he is violating the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we brought evidence from the fatawi of Maraja, Ayatollah Shaykh Muhammad Sanad, may Allah prolong his life, he says, pay attention. All the verses of Quran, that talks about wilay of Ahl al-Bayt That talks about mawadd of Ahl al-Bayt That talks about the guardianship of Ahl al-Bayt And tawalli and tabarri All of those verses are signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Min sha'air Allah We have to uphold these verses One of the verses After we, as soon as we read salah After salah إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما So according to the fatwa of Ayatollah Sheikh Muhammad Sanad he says this ayah is part of sha'air Allah we have to glorify it we have to uphold it we have to exalt it one how to exalt it every time we do salah we repeat this verse we find a good calligraphy that has this verse, we take it and we put it in our house. Every time that we walk past by this verse, we read it and we do salawat. This is some of the ways that we can uphold it because Allah didn't give us how to uphold it, how to glorify it, how to exalt it. It is up to you and I to uphold it and exalt it and glorify it according to our culture. If you have listened to my lecture, you know how, how much I attack the culture. I attack those elements of the culture which contradicts our teachings. Islam, Quran, Hadith, verses of, Ahl -Bayt, verses of Quran and Ahl-Bayt. 
but those cultures that are related to our Quran, Hadith, we need it. One of the youth was asking, we have different way of doing matam. Lato. Some people, even within, for example, within the endo paki community. Right now we have, for example, two communities. One of the communities that we are honored to have them, Muhammadiyah Center here. The way they do matam, two hand, they do matam. I went to Adara Jafariyah. They put one hand on their belt and they go with one hand. This is the culture of the beating their chest. We have Afghan community, they sit in the, on the ground. When they are reciting, they, they hit their on the lap. And then when the reciter reads, they hit their chest. We have the Arab community differently. Everyone came with a culture. The concept is the same thing. We are beating our chest for Imam Hussein We are honoring, exalting upholding Sha'a'ar al-Husayn alayhi salam which according to Shaykh al-Na'ini Ustad al-Fuqa'a all the sacrament all the rituals of Imam Hussein they put it together it comes under the umbrella of Sha'a'ar Allah so whatever we do for Imam Hussein alayhi salam that is pay attention that doesn't have haram in it it is permissible Shaykh Mustafa is giving fatwa by no means. Ustad al fuqaha gives us this. And Allah says, وَلَا تُحِلُّوا شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ يَا الَّذِينَ عَامَنُوا لَا تُحِلُّوا شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ It shakes me when I see somebody comes and says fatwa, halal or haram, about anything with Imam Hussain I said, who are you to say such thing? You are going against the teachings of Quran. If you know more than Ayatollah Na'ini, come forward. But if you don't know anything, say, I don't know. If an architect is sitting here, and we're trying to build the 10 floors here, I start giving my opinion, what would the architect do? I tell him, yes, one of the ideas was to, inshallah, within my 10 years plan, inshallah, we will build 10 stories building here with all the things that I have in mind. I thought that we can even build one story up there was an idea to build a school upstairs, full-time school. I thought, I went downstairs, I saw the pillars. I thought, okay, these pillars will hold another floor. I was talking with someone, an architect walked in. He said, Sheikh, what are you trying to do? I said, we're trying to raise funds to build another floor. He said, you know, these pillars won't, won't be able to take another floor on top of it. If I wouldn't go by the, I, was the, I, I could have said, okay, don't worry about it. Inshallah, khair, thank you so much. You know, those inshallah. As soon as he leaves, I said to the sponsor, no, give me, we can't do it. The architect, the expert will say, Sheikh, the engineer will say, Sheikh, these pillars that are in the basement won't take another floor. I, that I'm not an expert, so he will take it. Everybody will laugh at me. Everybody will say, do you know what you're talking about? Are you an engineer? Are you an architect? But when it comes to deen, when it comes to deen, everybody becomes marja taqlid. Everybody starts writing fatwa based on their emotions, based on their what they like and what they dislike. لا تحلوا شعائر الله. You who have faith, do not violate Allah's symbol. And again, I will repeat, according to Ustad al-Fuqaha, to the teachers of all the maraja, Shaykh, you're repeating yourself because I see what is happening on social media every day. I see it. You don't like it? You don't want to participate? I respect you and I will kiss your hand on this side. Don't give fatwa. Because all of these sha'a'ar is connected to one key element, they are connected to Ahl al-Bayt They are connected to Walayah. And without Walayah, Islam doesn't have heart. The heart of Islam is Walayah of Muhammad and Al Muhammad, salawat by the names. <laughs> have I brought any hadith yet? No. Until now, everything that I'm saying based on the verse of Quran, nothing from hadith. I'll give you one hadith only. How much we been attacked? Oh, you Shia only talk about hadith, 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 hadith. It's okay. No matter what we do, you still attack us. No matter what we do, you will still attack us. Hadith. And I will conclude. 
And Ja'far ibn Muhammad al Sadiq alayhi salam, where Imam says, Bunni al Islam ala khamsi. Islam has been established on five things Salah, Zakah, Sawm, Hajj, and Wilayah. Prayers, Zakah, charity, fasting, Hajj, and Wilayah. وَلَمْ يُنَادَ بِشَيْءٍ مَا نُودِيَ بِالْوَلَايَةِ On the day of judgment, the only thing Shaykh, you know the hadith that you have said and If your salah is accepted, everything will be accepted If your salah is not accepted, nothing is accepted Yes, I remember this hadith But the Imam says, again Don't only take one hadith, remember? You see how the introduction comes and puts its footprint in all of our discussion Don't take one hadith Imam says, if a person Praise hundred years all the all night day and night and he fast all years hundred years and he gives charity and he fasts and he does everything for hundred years and he is killed next to the Kaaba Shaheed Allah will not take it if he doesn't come and bring Walaya with him. Walaya of Ali is the key. Is it hard to believe? Sorry. Because with the wilaya of Ali, with the wilaya of Ahlul Bayt, السلام, deen, the religion became complete. Al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati that day wa raditu lakum al Islam deena. Until then, Allah wasn't satisfied with the religion. When announcing Amir al Mu'mineen as the Khadifa, Right now, the religion is complete. وَرَضِيتُ أَلْيَوْمْ وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ So when we say Islam without Ahlul Bayt is nothing, people come and question our judgment. This is a verse of Quran. All verses of Quran next to one another. Last verse actually. Because I want to conclude this. From tomorrow, we will get more. What is Sha'ar? Rituals. Allah sacraments. Chapter 42, verse 13. شرع لكم من الدين ما وصى به نوحا والذي أوحينا إليك وما وصينا به إبراهيم وموسى وعيسى to do what أن أقيم الدين he has prescribed for you the religion which he had enjoined upon Noah upon upon Noah and which we have also revealed to you and which we have have enjoyed upon Ibrahim موسى عيسى declaring what establish the religion Aqimuddin. How should I Aqimuddin? How should I st establish religion? Aqimu salah, I understand. Okay. Wudu, uh, muharramat, wajibat, Allahu Akbar, hamd, qul huwa Allah. This is the structure that I need to do. But Aqamatuddin, Aqam establishing religion, how? It's up to you and I to decide how to establish within the teachings of Quran and Ahlul Bayt السلام, making sure that the fatwa of marja is in it I don't come up and do something which is haram or I want to bring deen no the element of haram needs to be out what is haram? how this practice becomes haram? inshallah tomorrow night Masa'ab of Karbala doesn't finish. One after one, we're only, we can only touch the surface, if only touching the surface of Masa'ab Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Ayatollah Wahid Khurasani and Ayatollah Bashir al-Najafi and Sheikh Ashaq Fayyad, they say whatever we say, we can turn off the lights and turn on the echo. Whatever we say about the tragedy of Karbala, and lower the echo a little bit. Still is nothing. We read the Masa'af of Abul Fadl Abbas yesterday. Some glimpse of it. We cannot imagine what did Imam Hussein alayhi salam, what he went through when he heard Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Imam Hussein when he heard Abul Fadl Abbas calling him. We can't understand it. We can't imagine it. What Imam Hussein went through. Tonight, we want to bring Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba 
الكريم وأهل البيت عليهم السلام The generous one amongst أهل البيت عليهم السلام All of them were كرماء But Imam Hussein عليه السلام كريم وأهل البيت عليهم السلام How Imam Hassan played a role within Karbala With his son, young son, 13 year old, 14 year old maximum narrator tell us Qasim ibn al-Hassan He saw one after one and tonight in the night of Ashura Imam Hussein told all of his companions that tomorrow all of us we will be killed. All of us we will be sacrificed. Qasim ibn al-Hassan came to uncle, to his uncle Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Uncle, will I be also killed and sacrificed? Imam asked him, my nephew, what is remains from my brother Hassan? What is it? What is sacrifice and shahada means to you? He says, oh Imam, oh my uncle, ahla min al asal, being sacrificed for you, being killed for you, and being sacrificed while aiding you and protecting you. It is sweeter than honey for me. I want to give my life for you, Abu Abdullah Hussein. A 14 year old, we see how how this mother has his mother and how Imam Hassan alayhi salam have raised their kids with a, with loyalty and bravery that when the time of Ashura comes he's willing to go and defend his Imam not that because he's his uncle no he's defending his Imam on the day of Ashura comes one after one the companions of Imam Hussein alayhi salam go Qasim ibn Hassan is waiting for his turn when is it going to be my turn that I'm going to go and defend my uncle uncle my imam when is the time he's waiting and he's waiting he thinks that okay this is the time he comes to, to imam or oh, imam or oh, uncle ammi abu abdullah do you give me permission i want to go and defend you i want to go and fight alongside your hand in protecting you and aiding you i see how you've been oppressed here imam hussein alayhi salam says my nephew you are the only thing that has been left for my brother hassan i want you to be next to me not now couple of times he comes and he goes he begs Imam Hussein alayhi salam to go to the battlefield and fight Imam won't accept it he comes and he goes to the tent while his mother there he sits and he sits he start crying and weeping and mourning his mother comes to him my my dear son what is it with you that you what is it that makes you cry oh mother every time that I go to my father to my uncle Imam Hussein alayhi salam Abu Abdullah to ask for mission to go and fight and defend him he doesn't allow me I want to go and defend him his mother said I have something for you take this he, she brought something she opened the she opened the package it was a letter from Imam Hassan Mushtaba alayhi salam she said this way take it to your uncle have him read this letter as soon as he gets to Imam Hussein alayhi salam and he gives him the letter Imam Hussein alayhi salam you see how how this brought happiness at the same time how this made how it broke Imam Hussein's heart he saw the letter of his brother Imam Hassan al Mushtaba to my brother Hussein Assalamu alayka ya akhi ya Aba Abdullah this is for you on the day of Ashura I won't be there for you I have been I have been poisoned long time before you this is the letter for to ask you to please let my son to go and defend you and protect you Imam Hussein while he's reading the letter he starts shedding tears he hugs Qasim ibn al Hassan both of them start crying and crying historian tell us they cry until they both of them pass out they came back they get their conscience back again Imam Hussein give permission to Qasim ibn al Hassan go my nephew go and fight go he comes there is no armor his size he's a young kid a 14 year old kid there is no armor to protect him they wear him his kafan he wears the kafan and he comes to the battlefield a brave young 14 year old he starts fighting there was a one brave man one strong man in the army of Abidullah that he had four sons he saw this one kid coming a 14 year old he said one of my sons will will finish him he sends the first son Qasim ibn Hassan kills him the second son the third the fourth he said by God I will make his mother cry and weep for him he comes to the battlefield 
he also, this 14-year-old 14 14-year-old son of Imam Hassan, kills him. Amar ibn Sasi, there's, there's no way to get him. He, he sends an army of people, everybody with stone, with spears, with arrows. They attack Qasim ibn al-Hassan, son of the Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He hears Qasim ibn al-Hassan. Ammah, adirik Oh my uncle, come to my rescue. Imam Hussein alayhi salam runs. He runs to Qasim ibn al-Hassan. As soon as he gets to Qasim ibn al-Hassan, he sees that he is twisting within himself. It's the moments of death. He says, send my salam to my brother Hassan. I will be there shortly to join him. ألا لعنة الله على القوم الظالمين فسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين Again, as the Imam of our time has said, every time that you shed tears for the Masa'ab Imam Hussein alayhi salam, right away raise your hand and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten my reappearance. اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج Louder say Allah Amin. Allahumma ajjal li waliyik al-faraj. Allahumma ajjal li waliyik al-faraj. Allahumma ajjal li waliyik al-faraj. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma kun li waliyik al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan. Everybody, salawatuka. MashaAllah, louder. Fi hadhe. Waliyan. Wa qaidan. Wa dalilan. Wa ayna. Hatta tuskinahu ardaka tawa. وتمتعه في طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين صلوات.